Hi, my name is Stephen Hawes, the founder and CEO of Opulo, and this is the January 2026 Opulo company update. Opulo is an open source hardware company making the Lumen PNP, which is a desktop pick and place machine used for automatically assembling electronic components onto circuit boards. The Lumen PNP is meant for assembling PCBs in a wide range of production scales, anywhere from just a handful of boards for a quick prototyping run, all the way up to production of a few thousand units a year, like we do here, making boards that go into the Lumen PNP itself literally making its own boards. As always, this video goes along with the blog post link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube, or you can find the blog at opulo.io. All right, this is a big one. We got a lot of stuff going on. First off, as always, is our lead times. We are still actively looking for more assembly techs to help join our team. I talk about careers at the end of the update, but in general, check out careers.opulo.io. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, you wanna help us build pick and place machines and accessories, feeders, all that stuff, please apply. We're clawing ahead a little bit of our lead time. Internally, it's like two to three three weeks uh, for lumens and feeders. So it's a little faster than what we're saying on the web store, but as always, always check the product page to see the actual lead time. That is actually the current situation. We keep it very up to date. So if you're curious what the lead time is for any of the products, go check out the product page and that will tell you. And for those that saw the last update last month, we're making big changes to try and get the lead time down to zero. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, next up is the feeder loading station. This is a small little station. That whole purpose is just having a place to load your spool into your feeder. I made a prototype, I actually have it here, that I showed in the last month's update. There were a number of things that I didn't like about this. So I made a couple changes and this is what it looks like now. It's quite a bit wider and taller, which is just making it a little bit more stable. And also instead of the access panel being on the top with the four screws that are visible, I actually now have it in the bottom and it prints at this angle, which is kind of funky, but it means we need almost no support. And there's even a little opening for the cable to run all inside the geometry of the print. And then the cable spits out going right into the extrusion and into the slot. So there's like almost no visibility into the cable. It's all completely enclosed and custom electronics conditioning board in here as well with all the normal power conditioning stuff that you see from the Lumen PMP. It's very clear from the comments y'all left and sent us messages about this is something that you really want. <laughs> so I'm going to prioritize this uh, and try and get this out as soon as I can. I'm gonna spin up a few of these units. There's already a couple tweaks I wanna to make to this design, but I'm gonna get a couple of these spun up. There's a new custom PCB. There's actually two custom new PCBs, a new cable harness. There's a number of things that kinda of need to spin up uh, before we can really get these made in scale. So I'm working on kicking off all that stuff so we can get these available as soon as possible. Thank you all for your feedback on this. It's incredibly good to know that this is something y'all want and it's worth me spending some time on. All right, next up is wide feeders. Our beta program for wide feeders for 16 and 24 millimeter tape is still chugging along. At this point, it's a lot of the kind of normal stuff between the DVT and PVT production runs. So right now I'm working on getting stickers into production. There's no stickers on the side of these feeders. There's just one on the top that identifies the tape width and also acts as diffusion for the light, which is kind of a cool double duty. I'm working on tuning firmware and still implementing some of the PCB edits that people in Discord gave us feedback on, which is excellent. So there's not too much to report on these, just kind of still plugging along, trying to make that happen and preparing for a PVT run. All right, next up is a feeder and photon release that is imminent. This is a small incremental update Update to the feeder CAD and to Photon, the firmware that runs on the feeders. The CAD has a couple small changes, mainly some small things for assembly for us here, making a lot of them, just makes it really consistent. We also are opening up the hole in the drive motor cover where the shaft collar usually sits to be a little bit wider for a potential one piece integrated wheel assembly that we're looking to getting manufactured. And also in general for builders, it's gonna make it more robust to any kind of shaft collar you decide to put on your wheel. And I've also trimmed down the geometry of the peel worm gear, just making it a little shorter and also also a little bit filleted just to remove its engagement from the peeled film and kind of get it out of the way. The firmware update for Photon is also a few small changes. Thank you to Analogy for your microscope analysis of the gearing on the drive motor, super cool. Small update to the tick count for the encoder on that, so that's excellent. We also now gate programming a slot based on the UUID checking, which is a nice handy thing if you want to try and program stuff manually and you know edit your slot addresses manually with your own Photon packets. Just a nice check to add in. And we're also increasing increasing the peel time per 10th millimeter driven in Photon just a little bit, which just makes peeling more consistent, make sure that the film doesn't kind of eke its way up in the pick window. We currently have release candidate one available, uh, all built. So if you want to give it a try and give us feedback on how that release candidate works, please do. There's a link in the blog post and this video's description where you can download the new release candidate of 105 Photon and try it out and tell us what you think. Okay, next up is real cassettes. This is another thing that I kind of posited in the last month's update. The idea of having a feeder and a reel be combined together as a new atomic unit in a cassette. A lot of cool discussion about this, so thank you all for your feedback about how this might be structured. 
I think I'm gonna try and take a crack at making a prototype of this and start using it here and try and get some feedback on what the usability is of it. Um, this is really a usability product. This is not about the technology behind it. This is about how does it feel to use, what is easy to use. So that's really the testing we need to do here is what does it feel like to use this thing? So I'm gonna spin up a couple prototypes and try it out and we'll use it here on our line and we'll see if it's wonderful or if it needs work. So yeah, thank you all very much for your feedback on that. It was incredibly helpful and give me some good direction on what you all are thinking about what this could be. All right, next up is the paste extruder. One of the comments on the last video was about the paste extruder still being in beta and why it's still in beta. It's been, uh, I think over a year now that the paste extruder has been in beta. It's not because it has issues or doesn't work well. It's just that using it requires tuning. When you load up the syringe, for paste dispensing, it depends on a lot of factors for what settings you're gonna use. It depends on the temperature and how well you pack it and what paste you have and the diameter of your nozzle. A lot of variables there. And it's not hard to get it working well, but it just takes effort. And it's self-directed based on what you are doing with it. And I've been keeping the beta tag on it for that reason, because I want people to know that it has that that needs to be involved there. And I might be giving the wrong impression, like the hardware doesn't work, which is not true. It works fine and a lot of people use it. So I've been thinking about removing the tag and just adding a lot of context on the product page about what it means to use it and that you're, and that you're gonna have to tune it and tweak it to get the results that you want out of it. I've also made a couple changes to the paste utility and some great PRs have come in for the paste utility, improving its functionality, a lot of cool new stuff. Uh, merged a couple things about making fiducial detection uh, more robust. And also based on some feedback from some users, I made it so that there is now a text box to add arbitrary G code to run at the beginning of your job and then at the end of your job. Priming is a really nice thing to do for when you're running these pasting jobs. You can sit there and hit extrude a million times until you've kind of built up pressure in your syringe, but that kind of stinks. So in Instead, I just made it so you can manually add exactly how much you want to dispense first to prime it, maybe move it to a certain location where you want it to dispense, then it'll go do execute the sliced G code from your Gerber, and then it'll run your closing G code. So maybe that's retracting, moving out of the way, something like that. Also, a lot of people have been making their own paste extruders, but still using the paste utility. So I made a little checkbox where you can just invert the direction of the dispensing because different geometries, you might want to do that. Um, and all that is still saved in the job file, all, all that kind of stuff. So that's live actually as of January 8th. Uh, that is up and live. So I might remove the beta tag. I'm curious what y'all think about this and like, what does beta mean to you? You know, I want everyone to understand exactly what it means to use the thing, uh, but some people seem to be confused by the beta tag on this thing. So curious what y'all think about that. Okay, next up is Open PNP Update. This is a really exciting one. As a lot of you know, we've been recommending an older version of Open PNP for use with Lumen PNP. The main reason we've been doing this is about like consistency. Like this is a manufacturing process where reliability and consistency is the most important important thing. However, OpenPMP has recently switched to like a formal release schedule. And as they've been doing this, we've been consistently testing all their most recent releases and all the cool new stuff that they've been putting in there to see which version we feel really good about recommending for people to use. And we're super excited to say we are planning on supporting the upcoming release of OpenPMP. This version has a ton of cool updates, a lot of dev work that's been happening for a long time now that's come together in this version that is stable and reliable and understandable and consistent in a way that we feel comfortable recommending it over this tried and true one that we've had for a while now. Not only a ton of bug fixes and improvements, but also a lot of updates to how feeders are controlled for concurrent feeding, auto adjusting feeder pick position based on bottom vision position, which is a super cool one, changing how retry fails so you can start earlier in the pick vision place process and retry further back which is going to automate a lot more stuff and a whole bunch of other stuff. We're really excited about this version. We are currently working on getting all of our documentation updated, but don't worry if you don't want to upgrade from your current version, you just want to stick with what's tried and true and what you set up your system on. All our documentation is still going to stay for this current version online. And of course, we are still happy to support you using that older version. But if you want to upgrade, heck yeah, we're going to be ready for that too. A tremendous thank you to all of the people who have contributed to OpenPNP and especially thank you to Toby for helping us out through this process and Hugo for all of your awesome improvements in PRs. Okay, now the office. Last update, I talked about how we are running out of space here in our office. Our first official lease we've had as a company that is not my garage. I have been spending a lot of time working on this and trying to find a good suitable place for us. Touring spaces, negotiating leases, running numbers, calling insurance brokers, talking with lawyers. It's been a lot of stuff. <laughs> so where we're at now is we currently have a couple places that we think could work. Both of these places represent a greater than than 4x space increase. The thing I'm thinking about the most here is how do we keep production running 
while we move. <laughs> That's not easy. We are constantly, every day, every minute, working on building stock. We are building machines, we're building feeders, we're building accessories constantly. And trying to do the metaphorical Indiana Jones bag of sand golden idol swap between one place and another is going to be very tricky. I have a plan for how I think we're gonna be able to pull this off, is my hope. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of prep and I think it's going to be possible where one Friday we are building in this space and then that next Monday we're building in the new one. And there's gonna be a lot of things that are gonna have to happen to make that work, but I think it's possible. Also someone asked in the comments for the last video last month for December, uh, if I could do a tour of our current space before we leave. Absolutely, that's a killer idea. Yeah, I will definitely make like a, a tour of the space at its most packed. Okay, lastly is job postings. We are hiring for a bunch of stuff right now. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, or even if you aren't, we have a number of remote positions too. Please check out careers.opulo.io if you're excited about what we're doing and you wanna be part of this team. We'd love to have you, please apply. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments about this format or other information you'd like to hear in these kinds of updates, please don't hesitate to let us know in the YouTube comments or at support.opulo.io. Thank you all very much. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next month.